I'm very, very real uh, about all of this in the sense of um, uh, I, I actually am okay with myself, like um, throwing a little temper fit, you know, on occasion. Um, and I, I don't throw, I don't throw myself down over that, but it, it just a signal to me. It's like, okay, I lost it right there. Okay. All right. Well, Jesus, I want you to come and create in me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. um, because right now when there's pressure, when you're being squeezed, whatever's in you comes out, you know, That's right. and we're all being, every one of us is being squeezed. Every one of us and, um, celebrate your good days. Yeah. You know, celebrate your good days, but we're all being squeezed. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so what's happening is just exposure everywhere, everywhere. Okay. What, what's in you is coming out. Um, you know, uh, we're, every one of us is overreacting somewhere <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. and, um, so it's more like, okay, um, I blew it there, um, knowing the goodness and the grace of God, that his mercies are new every morning, and that you can always start again. You can always just say, okay, create me a clean heart, and know that if you say that prayer, Psalm 51, um, that he, he will go to work in your heart. Because um, a lot of us don't realize that we can't fix our own selves. No. <laughs> you know, um, no. you, you, might, you know, there is self-control, but there's a point where if, if something doesn't happen from the Lord internally, I literally cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And so this is, a, this is probably a situation for all of us where you have to a ask the Lord to go ahead and, and do the surgery and the work inside of you so that you can respond the way you think reflects him. Right. Um, and, and be okay with that and be okay with, with your rough days. Um, you know, like I, I've totally had rough days. I've totally mouthed off on stuff. I've totally, you know, uh, you know what I'm we saying? All do. And, yeah. and, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a hot blooded girl and, you know, that's, you know, push that button. And, you know, right. So. But I think some and, of us here at least had an image that if you're in ministry, you live a perfect life, you know? And no. yeah. <laughs> and it's a shame that the church hasn't always been honest about that, that, you yeah. know, like I have to live up to some impossible standard, but no, it's it's in living life together and being able to help each other, weep with those who weep, and be there when somebody's going through a hard time, and then they'll be there when you're going right. through a hard time. Let's just be honest. I mean, the Psalms are full of real honest, you know, people crying out to God, saying, "What the heck is going on here? Yeah. It's okay. I, it's legal." <laughs> I was reading uh, to my husband uh, last night, and I was just like, "Check out this Psalm. What David's saying about his enemies. This is so right. good." Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's not Yum. a bad, it's not a bad confession if you're just being honest before the Lord. You know, you just want to yeah. can't camp out there, but yeah. you're allowed to say something that's inside of you to let it come out. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I love what you said about that. I'm still stuck on your dream that the chi the, the Asian guy was very weak. Mm. Very. And and you know, yeah. listen, everybody, we need to hear this. Very weak. You know, it reminds me of, uh, you know, that, that movie, The Wizard of Oz. And, you know, behind that curtain, you heard this billowing, this voice come out and, you know, whatever he was saying. And, and when that little dog came and pulled the curtain by, it was just a little frightened person. So, you know, and that's how I, I see this. Yes, I know and I recognize people have died. But, you know, listen, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And the Lord is, yeah. you know, he said, you know, that like in Psalm 91, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall mm -hmm. abide, right, under the yeah. shadow of the Almighty. There's that dwelling piece. It's getting into the intimate place with the Lord to hear the directives because we cannot walk in fear. We can't live in fear. It's not that I don't get afraid. It's just that I know where to go when I'm in right. that place, when things are starting to really get to me, that I can go before yeah. the Lord you know, for his help. So, you know, you've written a lot, again, a lot of fabulous books, Seeing the Supernatural, Glory Carrier, the, the Intercessor's Handbook, and you really cover a lot of different aspects of the supernatural and how to, how to press through and how you had to press through. And mm -hmm. I mean, I remember even reading, I forget in which book, that when you mm -hmm. went to Australia, I think it was with a broken arm and how... Uh, that you, was, that was, um, uh... I, it was um, uh, over in Central Asia. Central Asia, ministering yeah. and how you press through. I mean, you might want to talk about some of your experiences because, you, like you said, you lived it. This isn't something right. that you just try to read from somebody else's book. These are experiences that you have, um, you know, experienced that, that brought break, great breakthrough and how the Lord directed you. This is for all of us. Yeah. And so right. you, maybe you might want to talk a little bit about that. 
Sure, sure. Well, again, going back to our discussion about inner healing and deliverance and the importance of that, you know, on a personal level, um, but all of us are, are, you know, intercessors and ministers right. to the to the sphere of influence that the Lord has allowed, okay? So, so um, and that's different for all of us. You know, right. There's nothing to compare. It just is different for all of us. So my assignment is often going into different nations, primarily for prayer and for ministry, but it's always connect to some kind of intercession. So what happens is, um, you know, we don't always know um, uh, what's in our own heart. We don't always know, when we talked about those covenants, we don't always know sometimes what's still out there that's that's um, speaking or ruddering over our life until we get into a situation that brings it out. And that's what happened with the broken arm. Okay, I'll just give you the, the condensed version. And so when I went into that, that country, it's a Muslim country, um, and all it was is we were just going to catch the subway, went down the stairs. They didn't, uh, they didn't prep the stairs real well for, for people to not slip, you know, um, like they do in, in some of the, you know, more westernized countries. And so um, I, all it was, I slipped on the stairs. You know, you think, well, that's just an accident. And um, I normally would have thought that. I'm not, like, looking into stuff. Right. I'm not trying to spiritualize everything. But I felt it. I knew something was off. And he just, and it was kind of like when Jesus said, you know, I felt power come out of me, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what are you talking about? Right. And I'm like, no, really. Something was really off. And it wasn't, it didn't have to do with the, the country. It didn't have to do with, with the ministry. Something was just off. And I right. knew it. I interpreted it because we rationalized. I interpreted right. it that somebody on my team um, is, is hiding something in, in they're in sin and they're hiding something. That was my interpretation. Cause it couldn't be me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like staring them down. You know how we are. I'm staring them down and I'm like trying to figure out what it is. Who on my team has, has the breach, you know? And, um, I walked away from that thinking nobody, there's nobody, nobody on my team that has the issue. I just had to put it before the Lord. Cause I had fallen. I had obviously broken my arm. I started passing out from the pain. The pain was like a 10 and I still had it. I was on my way to a pastor's meeting, underground pastor's meeting. And I was determined to go, um, you know, and that's actually where I was healed. You know, you, I'd have to show you, but you still see the, the issues in my elbow if I show it to you. But, um, but I was supernaturally healed, Praise but God. I knew that something was off. Okay. So I came back home. I uh, flew back home, um, actually I flew to another country and then I flew back home. And then um, not too long after I had a, um, a family ring that I hadn't worn for a while, but I, was, I received it upon my college graduation. It was nearly a hundred years old, four generations old. I knew that there was an oath on it, but I didn't understand it because um, I got it when I was a new Christian. So I just never dealt with it, didn't understand it. I just knew it was great grandfather's ring and um, everybody was adding diamonds to it through the generations. I had this like really gaudy, you know, ring by the time I got it. And um, I had it in a drawer and it's a uh, ring started talking. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Again, you know, stuff that happens in Africa, I guess. I don't know. No, it happens in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so the ring starts talking and it's, it starts talking about, it starts saying great grandfather, Masonic, family curse. And it just kept going and going and going and wouldn't shut up. Right. And so, um, I mean, I had a grid for weird, but that was a little out there. And my husband and I were still um, learning to be on the same page with all of that at, at the same time. So I thought that's that's out there for me, and that's definitely going to be out there for him. So I just quietly, I first I tried to speak to the ring and say, you know, um, you're going to be quiet, or I'm going to I'm going to sell you. You know, <laughs> what else would you do with it, right? And so um, it didn't it didn't shut up, and so I, I went. I actually sold. I got rid of it. Okay, so so then that's when it all started to roll. Um, next thing you know, um, I had this dream, and this um, this uh, looked like a white gangster standing over me, and he's saying, "I'm the family curse," mm. and um, I knew it was connected to the Masonic. I had started going through those um, renunciation prayers. Um, the the copies that I got, they actually uh, showed a curse on the arm. Um, but basically, anybody who's Masonic, if you read those renunciation, you'll see your whole family history in it. Oh, yeah. um, you know, it's like reading it's like reading the news on your family. It's yeah. all there. And so this demon showed up in my dreams that I'm the family curse. Um, I woke up completely nauseous and sick for a couple hours, but I knew it broke. And it was and I but it, where did it erupt? Where did it get exposed? Where did it start when I was on assignment? Mm. Okay. For some reason it got, it got, um, a hit or, you know, Satan decided to use a covenant 
that he could use because I hadn't broken it yet right. um, to try and thwart my life, you know, but the Holy Spirit was good. You know, he protected me, preserved me, walked me through it. And um, once that was broken, a whole big blessing uh, uh, opened up in my life within about a month. And that's when I started writing. And mm, so awesome. it's really interesting that, yeah. you know, we deal with it. But it's like, there's a reason why it's there. It's trying to steal something that God has for you. If there's a generational curse, it's because there's a generational blessing. And so this is why we want to deal with it. Yeah. You know, um, there's a lot attached to freedom, yeah. you know, more than we realize. Yeah.